Hi everybody! In this video I'm going to show you a brief introduction to using JASP, which stands for Just Another Statistics Program. You can find JASP on the web um, at jasp-stats.org. Uh, to get to this webpage I googled download JASP. Um, you can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And I'm using the uh, 8.0 version and have not downloaded the newest 8.0.1 version. If you are on a Mac like myself, you will need X Quartz. This is true also if you're using R. Um, it's a uh, graphics rendering uh, issue. Okay. Uh, they've also got some really great stuff on their website if you want to look at some how-to guides, um, just in general about, about JASP. It is constantly being updated. So from the time that I downloaded this last week, a couple weeks ago to December 15th, they've already thrown out an update. Um, and so let's get started. So I've already downloaded this. So I'm just gonna open it up. Now, the nice thing about JASP is that it is point and click, um, unlike R. And so it's somewhere between SPSS and R. If you like SPSS, um, you won't like the cost of SPSS, but you might like the way JASP works. If you like a little more control over what you're doing, you'll like R better. So each has their pros and cons, um, but in this video, I'm just gonna show you how to work this, uh, this program. And then I uh, will have subsequent videos that show you specific analyses and their considerations. So this is more just to like, how do I open the program? Um, so one of the first things you want to do is how do I import data? Okay, there's two big tabs here, common, which is where most of the analyses are, and file, which is where all the <coughs> saving happens. So when you click on file, you can see I've opened a couple of different documents just to test this, but um, you can find things from your computer. So you just hit browse and go to wherever you have the file saved. It does show you which files are openable and which files are not. So CSV files, those are common delimited. You can open those in Excel, um, are available, but Excel files, .xlsx, are not openable. So you will have to save it in CSV format to be able to open it. You can also open SPSS files, .save. So we'll look at both of those. Um, you can open things from OSF, uh, so Open Science Foundation. If you have an account on there, you can log into your account and open files from there. And then they have some example files if you just want to play around and look at some different types of data. So let me show you first how um, a couple of different things open. So let's look at a, a SPSS file first, because lots of people are familiar with this type of program. And so when you open a file, it does open a new instance of JASP every time you open a new file. So if I click File and I go back and I open this dependent T one, it will open in a new window. So it does not just like overwrite that one, it opens in a new instance of JASP, meaning another set of JASP is open. So I'm gonna close that. So I can open CSVs and I can open SPSS files. Um, one thing to notice is that it has this split screen here, and what that's for is when I get some analyses running, but if you don't like how big the screens are, like I can't see all of my variables over here on the left, I can scroll to look at a bunch of the different variables. You can also resize the windows, and that might be, and the columns here. Um, so when you open an SPSS file, what happens is it pulls the label, the big label, not the variable name, but actually the label from SPSS. And the, the advantage of that is that I have the entire label. So if you use descriptive labels, that's really helpful. The disadvantage is that it makes these huge columns if you have very long labels. Uh, so uh, again, pros and cons. If you have um, columns that already have value labels, meaning instead of being numbers, they have these um, these labels here, that's what you'll see is the, the values and not the numbers. And so in SPSS, this particular file was not text. It was set up with uh, ones and twos and value labels. Uh, and that's what I'm seeing. 
But really, the, the advantage to importing SPSS is if you don't have SPSS on your computer because you can't afford it, um, or your university has decided not to use it anymore, uh, but someone sends you an SPSS file, I can at least still use it. Um, the disadvantage here is that there's no editing currently in JASP. So hopefully I will be wrong very soon in this video, but right now you cannot edit files in JASP. But what I could do is export this file into something I could edit like Excel. Um, all right, so what else can we see here? Let's look at these little these little things here, these little label, like three dots next to them. So that tells me what type of variable it is. So for nominal and ordinal variables, you get these little three dots. If a file imports with literal text instead of value labeled text, you will see two dots and an A. So let me show you an example of that. Give us in this one. So here I have the three dots. Now this is a number, this 2007 here. So why would it come in as nominal ordinal? Well, it, it treats any whole number as either a number or a label. The good thing is that that, that doesn't affect the analysis you run, really. Here, it's very, very hard to see, but it's right here, um, is the type of variable. It has, a little, it has a little A. That little A indicates that it imported as text. Then here I have the ruler. The ruler here indicates that this is a numeric. Um, and so it came, because it had decimals, it came through this way. Obviously this is changeable. So let me go back to my other file here. I know that this is actually an ordinal variable, so I could pick a different one. So nominal could change here and make that kind of be like the Likert scales that you're used to, or Likert if you want to say it correctly. Um, or I can say, no, no, this is actually a number. When you do that, it switches back to the original numbers. So it kind of just depends on what you want to see. Um, your labels are still there. It's just it switched them off when I did this. Okay. Um, and that doesn't change a whole lot of what you do. It changes a little bit in the descriptives windows. All right. Some other things that you can do just in the screen before we can get to uh, running things is there are a couple of other modules that you can turn on, such as structural equation modeling, very simple sim, um, or there's a summary stats one. And um, it's a little, I think this is sort of like only going to be Bayesian here. And so these things are actually in the common window as well, down here at the bottom. So if summary stats at the moment, I don't know what it's for but it's there. Um, all right, look at my list of things. So we talked about modules, we talked about moving stuff around, the types of files that you can open. These are all the different analyses that I can run at the moment. So under descriptive stats, have descriptives, basic descriptives and reliability, three different types of t-tests. So independent, sometimes called dependent or paired samples t, one sample. ANOVA, repeated measures ANOVA and COVA. Under regression, I can do correlation, regular linear regression. And then under frequencies, I can do binomial tests, contingency tables, it's like chi-square and log linear, so log regression. And then brand new, I think, to version eight, which makes me really happy, is factor analysis. So let's just play with some little basic descriptive so you can kind of see what, to me, one of the most beautiful things about JASP. So I'm gonna click on descriptives and then just descriptive statistics. Now, it does tripartite the windows, so all the windows are always open, but you can move this stuff around if you just don't want to see them um, temporarily. And then to get back to the data, you click OK to make it go away so that you can see what you're doing either way. Okay. Um, over here, this looks very similar to SPSS if you've used SPSS, but it is, it is beautifully done in the way that it is not SPSS. So over here I have my descriptives, my possible options that I can do. And when I click here to move them over, it automatically populates down here what I have told it to do. So it gave me the, um, the descriptives for what is your gender. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense to calculate the mean for that particular variable. So instead I could click on display frequency tables and that actually gave me a frequency table, and that makes a little more sense um, because gender isn't a variable that I would want to do descriptive stats on. 
Um, now in SPSS, I would have had to reload that. So descriptives and now and like analysis, descriptives, descriptives. I would have to click three more times and hit okay. But here I can turn them on and off just like that. Very quick. So we can click on plots here. We can just do distribution plots, which automatically gives you the ones with the labels. All of this is editable. So I can click on it and edit it. Well, I thought you could. I think I might have to do it here. Oh, I can add notes. Okay. Sorry, these are not editable at the moment. <clears throat> uh, but I can copy them and paste them into um, a Word document. I can, let's see here, look at it box plots of the data. Now we should probably pick a better data piece here. So let's try. How much do you agree with this equation? So how much do you agree? I love chocolate ice cream. Right. This makes more sense. So it's a one to five scale. Um, and it gave me the min to max. So only three to five. Uh, I have no missing data. It gave me a plot of that data. And now I have my box plot. Under statistics down here, I can turn on and off these different options. So some of these are automatic, like the, um, the options that you have here, but you can change them if instead you want standard error, skew, and kurtosis. Okay. All of that is dynamic, meaning every time I clicked something, it automatically gave me, updated my plot. Now, the nice thing about these plots is they're in APA style. And if you wanted to put them in a report or your homework, you would click the little down arrow, hit copy, go over to Word, uh, oops, and paste them into a new document, not the one where I'm making my list of videos here, but paste that into Word. And now I can edit if I don't like, you know, this is really long, I probably don't wanna use that big old uh, title there, but I can make this longer so I can actually edit the table to look a little bit nicer. Um, maybe control the number of decimals over here, but how beautiful is that? Cut and paste. In SPSS you cannot do that. It's a horrible the way it looks when they cut and paste depending on what kind of computer you're using. Additionally, um, that's already APA style and really maybe I'm just fixing the column name. Okay. Um, hit OK to go back to the data and this will stay open so I can view it next to my data or I can kind of push it off to the side if I just want to work looking at the data. Uh, so that's it for my basic example of what JASP does and to me what what is really the beauty of JASP. Um, uh, let's see I had that one other file open. One nice thing about having text is that you can use the text let's say as a grouping variable. Um, grouping variable must have at least two levels. Oops, it did not like whatever I just tried. So let's try that. There we go. <clears throat> um, and if you have multiple levels or variables, it will let you pick different options. So um, once we get into how do I do t-tests or how do I do an ANOVA, we'll talk more about these screens. Um, but all of this always outputs in a style that is appropriate to report for uh, journals or reports. And then it is very flexible in how you change and use your data. Okay. All right, so briefly I covered um, what types of files that you open and how to import those types of files. Um, how you can move the windows around, the modules on the top right. Just a couple of little examples of analyses, how you can cut and paste into Word. The only thing we haven't really covered is saving things. So you can save these projects. They will save um, the project itself where I have the, um, the document that JASP has created with the data. Can, okay, do the thing. We'll save as a .jasp file. Obviously that is only openable with, with this program. So if you're taking my course, please don't do that. Uh, instead, you can do export results if you'd like, and that'll save it as an HTML file that will be e easier for us to open, especially in grading. But you can also export the data. Oops. And it will export as a CSV. So if you have an SPSS file, uh, let me close that one. 
So this was originally an SPSS file. I can export that data as a CSV file. So then I can edit it and change it. Uh, let's say I need to do data screening, which I can't do currently in JASP, but I can save it as a CSV and work with that. So I can convert with files without having to find a special conversion tool online. Okay. So that's how I might export data in uh, ways that researchers can use a little better. And that is a very brief intro to JASP.